Good day, fellow average humans. Welcome back to the winter of episode 3 in our better Minecraft world. In the last episode, we made this beaut of a castle to hide the absolute shame of iron golems getting burnt alive. And today I have some proper exciting plans. Because using some of the awesome better Minecraft features, we're going to make an insane early game XP farm using a bunch of different mob spawners. And then obviously cover it up with an even better build. In between episodes, I've been a busy busy boy. I've extended the path all the way from our starter house and as you can kind of see, I've extended the path of the castle down the mountain. Although you'll just have to trust me because winter came and ruined it with a bunch of average snow. Uh, I've also done a load more diamond mining but I figured I'd do that between eps cause it was hella boring. But thankfully now because of that we have 59 diamonds and that means we can get rid of this horrific half and half diamond and iron armour. So now we have all the diamond tools we're going to need, some of which are a little bit worse for wear, and we finally got full diamond armour which is a little bit more to my liking. I want to play a new game called Guess how many times Snow will die when he does something dumb. But obviously I won't do that until we've slept. I'm not a madman. Because if we head up to the top of the mountain we'll see that just over there is a little structure that seems to house some very noisy neighbours. There is a load of the normal pillagers, but also some of these weird new ones which I have no idea what they do. But they're probably very scary. But there's also loot in there, and I want the loot. So let's see now with my new beautiful blue armour, how many times I die if I go in there. Stick your guesses in the comments, will ya? Ah! Whoa. Hello? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, it's one of you. Oh! What? Oh no! Uh oh. Oh no! Oh no! Give me my stuff back! Oh no! Ah! Uh oh. I just want to put my stuff back on! Oh no. Go away! Yay! Oh my god, I killed him with my fist. You must die! I don't know what you are! Oh, that was easy. Oh, my stuff, my stuff! We did it! Now we get to find what loot we've got. So we've got a totem of undying now, which is pretty cool. And then there's a chest around here. So what do we get? A smithing template and a golden apple. And then a whole load of other junk. Nice, not too bad. What else we got? Is there a chest down here? Um, um, can't find any more chests. you got to be kidding me. That can't be everything, surely. Oh, there's one over here as well. Okay, nice. Oh, awesome. Just another load of junk. And a music desk. Is there any up here? No. Okay, so we died like multiple, multiple times. All for just a tiny little bit of rubbish loot. Yay! Although, what is that? That looks super cool, but that also looks like a pillager face. So I'm guessing there's a lot more death if I go over there. Maybe when we're a little bit enchanted. And speaking of enchanting, seeing as that... Bleh, that's a little bit close. Seeing as that didn't go particularly well, let's have a little snooze and then head home and do a little bit of enchanting. Ah, where did you come from? Oh my goodness. Ow! Stupid pillagers being all stupid and stuff. Anyway, as I was trying to say, I need to enchant and for that I guess we're going to need an enchanting table, right? And for now, I think we're just going to chuck it down in this room, which at the minute is just a dumping ground for all the tables and the beds for these guys over here. Oh yeah, and apparently we have a pet fox now. I think that'll do for now. It's a little bit of a squeeze, but hopefully that's enough for level 30. Yeah, boy. Now there's a few enchantments in particular that I want. 
Obviously, we need to deck out the armor a bit and get efficiency and stuff like that. But to be honest, the thing that I really want at the moment is a very nice enchantment for a diamond pick. And I'm pretty sure it's a level 3 enchantment, which I'm not getting at the minute. But thankfully, we have the ability to keep re-rolling enchantments until we get the one that I want. Which is this bad boy, Vein Mining, baby. And shall I show you what that one does? Because in here, there's a keybind for it, as you can see. And if we hold that down while we're mining ore, oh yeah, that is proper lush. Wait, does it work if we mine veins of stone as well? Whoa, that's even more lush. Resource gathering just got an absolute ton easier. Oh, but I kind of ruined this cliff, didn't I? Anyway, that's one exciting enchantment all sorted. I'm going to spend some time getting some of the normal ones and I'll be back in a jiffy. Bit of enchanting done and it's not a bad start actually. We got prop 4 on some of this armour. We got this incredibly average bow and now we've got two vein mining picks so we can join them together when we have some levels with these two. I've got nothing on the sword yet, mainly because of this place. We came across this in the last episode and look at this absolute beaut. Sharpness 5 baby! There's also these two which look all shiny and new. Curse of Frozen Touch, which does, um, something. And also Live Catch, which I guess is something fishing related. But honestly, I have no idea what they are, so if there's any clever clogs out there who can tell me, let me know in the comments. But now that's done, the next job we need to do is to fix these two picks. So for that, we're going to need the absolutely legendary Mending Book. So let's have a little look in this village for a librarian. Target acquired. What are you selling me old mucker? Innovation. That's not mending. Target number two. Fortune. That's also not mending. Third time lucky. Come on baby, give me mending. <gasps> no flipping way. 34 though, it's a little bit pricey. Let's make a little Fletcher and then see if we can trade up for some emeralds. Okay, let's purchase a couple of these buttes for the absolute win. And then trap you in there so you can't get out. And I guess to put these books on the picks... Oopsie. And once we've got some more of them for everything else, we're going to need a way to get the XP. So it's time to put together a cheeky XP farm. But not just any old XP farm. A better XP farm. Because it's better Minecraft, isn't it? Ooh, what's down there? No, I'm getting distracted. We're going to be making that better XP farm with the help of a mod called Spawners Plus. Isn't that right, me old mucker? I'll pop a link in the description to the mod and a super helpful explainer video from the creator. But to quickly summarise, we're going to need three things to make this super duper awesome farm. We're going to need a very special enchantment, some of these spawner fragments, and also some of these mob souls. Ooh. Scary, right? So for the first thing, the enchantment that we're going to need is something called Soul Stealer, which goes onto our sword. We're not getting it at the minute, I think it's a level 1 enchantment, so hopefully a few of these re-rolls should do the trick. Aha, here we go. Soul Stealing, it's actually a level 2 enchantment. Let's bang that on there. Lovely jubbly. Next, we need to make some inactive spawners. As you can see, these are made from spawner fragments, which are dropped if we do something that goes against everything I'd normally do and break a spawner. And you actually get more of these if you use fortune. So on this one, we got three from one spawner. So now I just need to go around hunting for a load more, which I'm gonna go and do now. Okay, bye. Several hours later and I now have a bunch of the spawner fragments alongside a load of other pretty useful stuff, including the souls for zombies, spiders, skellies and creepers. I get these from killing them with the trusty enchanted sword and we'll need these in a little bit when we make the farm. And for the farm we're going to need these spawner fragments so we can make an inactive spawner, but at the minute we can only make three. 
So I need some more spawners and then I remembered in episode one that we found this place, which happens to be absolutely covered with them. So I'm going in, wish me luck. Now this bit up the top here shouldn't actually be too bad because it's pretty well lit up. But I'm thinking we need to block off this bit to stop all the scary stuff coming up because I'm pretty sure there's quite a lot of stuff down there. What's around here? Hello. Haha, <laughs> you're stuck. Oh, what's this? Let's light this up. Who are you? A rascal. I have no idea. Ugh, where did you go? I had no idea what to do with that thing, so it's a good job it's disappeared. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. What are you? Alright, he's annoying me now. Now, I'm pretty sure in all of these, we've got a bunch of spawners and some loot chests. Ooh, a goat horn. Nice. Here we go. Which one is it? I think I might have just announced to all the mobs that I'm here. Okay, we got six fragments, which isn't enough for another spawner, which means I need to figure out how to go down there. And it's already sounding not very fun. Okay, I'm just going to break these. And my strategy here is going to be run and spam with torches. Ah, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, my God. Ah, run away. Run away. Oh, my God. It's chaos. It's chaos. It's chaos. Oh, no. Not a baby zombie. Go away. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. There's too many mobs. Ah! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh god! Okay. Well, that went well, and we're over here with the mending villagers, and it's night time. Should we give it another go? Now I'm kind of hoping that I was far enough away there, and everyone's despawned. Let's get my stuff back. Oh my goodness, so much junk. Let's have another go. Oh no, I can hear witches again. Uh oh. See, the spawners are in these things, so I've got to quickly run through and try and light them up. Ah! Oh no, it's happening again. It's happening again! Yeah, fight each other. Fight each other! Uh oh. Ah! I'm running! I'm running! Let me away! Oh no, I don't like twisty staircases! Oh, at least we got out. Better than last time, I suppose. I'm pretty sure we did an alright job lighting it up. I think we just need to get rid of these guys. Oh, skellies! They're so annoying! Oh, I hate witches! They're the worst! Now, what's going on down here? It's starting to sound eerily quiet. Ah, oh, witches! Go away! Ow! You're hiding. That's not fair. Anything else left? It's looking good. I think we did it! Oh, goodness. My head's not looking too pretty, is it? Okay, I thought that was going to be another guess how many times I die. But I think we did a pretty good job there. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I didn't freak out. I definitely didn't freak out. Now we got an extra 23 fragments. Let's go make that mob farm. I told you I don't like spirally staircases. And the plan here is to make a big cube for the spawners to go in and then cover it all up with a nice looking build. And seeing as we already have a path going along here, I think this sort of area over here will be a good place to pop it. But there's a big hole. Oh, no, there isn't. Oh, yeah, so there isn't. That's a bit of a result. I guess we can make the farm now then. And step one is a big, disgusting cobble box. And step two is we need to funnel the mobs somewhere so we can get the XP. I'm thinking we can pop the spawners here. We'll get rid of these deep slate bits underneath. And then if we have some water flowing from this side, they can then drop down and funnel to a little killing chamber around that sort of area.
Okie dokie, I think honestly that is about right. I guess the only way for us to find out is to give it a test run and hope that the mobs don't escape. So we need to right click on the spawners with the souls and that will turn them from an inactive to an active spawner. And then we need to stick a lid on this thing and that's when it starts to get dangerous. And then we jump down here and we see how it's going. Well hey, we got loads of mobs. Uh oh. Oh no! Oops. Uh. Oh, I know. I forgot to put these there. I don't think it's exploded anything because of the water. So I guess a bit of a result. But hey, we're getting XP and they're dying. Lovely jubbly. Should we free cam it and have a look? Oh no, I forgot to put the slabs on top of the spawners. Uh oh. Okay, can we do this without any escaping? Oh yeah, easy peasy. Or not. Move out of the way! So now that's working an absolute treat, I'm thinking a dirty cobbled box isn't really in keeping with the area. So we need to pop a build around it. But before we do any of that, we need some resources. Q resource gathering montage with later me talking over the top of it. And the resource gathering started with grabbing some andesite before remembering about the whole vein mining thing. Use that to grab some stone and some asphalt which I forgot to record before mixing the vein miner to my fortune pick to get some coal. Cleaned out a geode of its calcite which meant I had to repair the pick before finding some diamond calcite at another geode which was a new one. Vein mined some deep slate which I have to say is much more fun but then it meant I needed to go back for more XP after. Chop some Sakura before heading off in search of a spruce forest which I found with this village that had copper golems. They are well cute. They should have won the mob vote to be honest although I don't know what they actually do so I can't really help you there. Picked up a load of spruce, stole the waystone for home before heading into a lush cave where this weird lush creeper blew up and created clay which confused the heck out of me. Vain mined some moss which was well loud and made me jump before heading home placing down the waystone and then spending ages and ages crafting up bits and bobs. And all of that stuff has magically moved over here and you can see that I've tried to be a bit of a clever sausage and organise it a bit. I'm sure that won't last long though when I'm building it. And all of that means now that we can finally get started on the build and for step one as always it's to try and figure out a shape. And now clearly the main part of the house will need to go here in the middle to cover up the big box. I'm thinking then we can have a little side building over here for where the mobs funnel down and then probably another shape on the opposite side to try and balance it out a little bit. Next it's time to start building up the walls. Now in the past I've done a lot of builds with like wooden beams and stuff like that but for this one over here I've just kind of gone with the straight walls and I'm kind of digging that to be honest because it's a little bit more realistic. The colour palette for this XP house is going to be quite similar to this one so it's going to transition from the stony stuff into the white stuff because it's kind of right next door and that seems quite logical. So logical me is going to build some logical walls now after I've slept. Logical walls done and I've gone pretty tall with this so I've left in some quite big spaces for windows so I think that it's in proportion. And rather than just random walls and stairs chipped in here to make it look textured, I've added these whole sections of walls on the edges there so it kind of looks like it's crumbling away. Again, logic, innit? And after astounding myself with logic I then added an A-frame roof using Sakura and some deep slate stuff onto these two sections of the build with a little slopey one on this bit over here for good measure. I then went round adding some windows, an entranceway and some other little decorations like lattices to break up the walls before finishing off with a little canopy thing which honestly I just copied from the starter house. And now after joining the path all up and spamming a load of other bits and bobs around the house is done and looking absolutely fabulous. I think it's a bit of an improvement on a deep slate box. And speaking of a deep slate box um, yeah, it's kind of still visible, isn't it? Should we fix that? Much better. So if I take you on a little tour, all I've done really is make a little walkway from the entrance here down to the killing area. We got plants, we got barrels, tables, we got the banners from the dungeons as well. And you might think, Snow, the farm is broken. There's no mobs. Well, sucker, you'd be wrong because I'm a clever sod and I added an on-off switch. 
mainly because they were being all loud and obnoxious. But this links to a redstone lamp so we can flip it on and... Mobs galore, eventually. Yeah, like I was saying, mobs galore. Anyway, I'm sure you've all had enough of my bleh, epicness. I'm going to go back to being average and I'll see you lot in the next one. See you later, alligator.